morning. Today is Wednesday and we have been here in Ireland for a couple of days now, or a day now. Um, everything yesterday was really, uh, really difficult <laughs> with our rental car and everything, so I wasn't able to film that much. Hopefully I got a montage in or something. Um, right now we are at Nanny Murphy's Cottage in uh, County Longford, and I love this place, and I will give you a tour of it later, but it's raining right now, so I can't take you outside and everything. Um, our original plans were canceled for the day, so we are going to do some things that are... Um, that our Airbnb host, Michael, suggested and kind of doing a choose your own adventure day. It should be fun. <laughs> Today we traveled just half an hour away into the hidden heartlands of Ireland to Granard. Granard is a beautiful little town with an ancient history in the north of County Longford. It is best known for the motte built at the head of the town. Layers of history can be seen here from the Celtic times, visits from St. Patrick himself, through the Nordic invasion all the way to the Irish War of Independence. Here we visited the Knights and Conquest Heritage Center. We were lucky enough to get a private tour with Deirdre at the start of the day. She gave us a brief overview of the history of the area before taking us into the exhibition. On Green Art, the place of the high sun. Look out there, the sun is always shining in this town. <laughs> <laughs> Not everyone believes me. But yes, we can trace our history and heritage right back to pagan times. Mm -hmm. A time where great chieftains gathered with their community. We still remember the great fifth province of Mieda, the center point at Ushnach, where the goddess Eru is buried. And it was Eru, a woman, that you Eru. 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 It sounds like a battle cry. Eru. It is her, a woman, that gives her name to this land of Erin, this island, Era, mm -hmm. Ireland. Right. Yes. So if the high kings, they would have lived, they would have left ring forts here on our landscape, dotted with ring forts, this entire territory is. So can you imagine the layers of history that are underneath? the mott. You have the high fire hill of pagan times. You have the ring fort of our high kings here in the year 600, 700, and the arrival of the Normans to build a further fortification, a mott and bailey. Our little room inside side is dedicated to one lady from Granard who fell in love with a statesman called Michael Collins. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we'll tell you the story about Kitty and Michael and indeed Harry, another gentleman that had his eye on her indeed. <laughs> there are many stories to be told in Granard, but today's main focus was the invasion, or rather invitation, of the Normans. He wanted a secret weapon. He wanted Normans. The Normans were the most feared fighters in Europe, descended from the Vikings who had settled in Normandy, France, the region that bears their name to this day. Norman knights were the shock troops of their day, clothed in long mail shirts with iron helmets, long swords and spears, and riding powerful horses, nothing could stand before them. On the brink of achieving all his ambitions, King Dermot died. Now there was no one controlling the Normans. They swept across Ireland, and kingdom after kingdom fell to their swords. In 1172, they came here to Granada, slew its king, Donald O'Farrell, and burnt his palace to the ground. They then built a great timber castle on the hill outside this center, and settled down to rule their new land. This is their story. Great swords, they combined the bog iron with bones of their ancestors, forming a very early carbon steel. They furnished their swords with grooves such as this, called fullers, 
It makes the sword more aerodynamic in battle. It also gives the sword strength. But this little vacuum, it was designed to allow you to withdraw your sword at speed from your opponent's flesh. And it became known as the bloodline or blood gutter. Every part of the sword has a meaning, a significance. Deirdre took us on an interactive exhibit teaching us about the Normans and life during that time. I want to see you bite that sword off your shield and shout arrow! One, two, three! Arrow! <laughs> <laughs> Okay, was it kind of cheesy? Yeah. But it was actually really fun. It was especially fun seeing mom let out her inner child. I now envisage the rights upon Matilda to become Lady Matilda. I now declare in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Matilda, you are now a lady with great powers. Arise! Lady Matilda. <laughs> <laughs> Deirdre did a great job mixing the interactive elements with the historical context. I'd imagine this would be a great experience for kids. It was great for us. After the weaponry experience, she left us to peruse the rest of the museum. This gave more context to the political turmoil of the day, as well as giving us a glimpse of what life was like for the Normans living in Ireland at the time. Considering I thought this was going to be just another tiny hometown museum, the technology and budget of the place surprised me. They've done a great job with the center so far, and I'm excited to see how it develops. The center recently began expanding in hopes to include a reenactment village surrounding the Mott. This will further their efforts of immersing their guests into the history of the area. All in all, I was pleasantly surprised with the center and recommend it as an off-the-beaten-path activity, especially for families. The last room in the center is dedicated to Kitty Kiernan, a resident of Granard that is known for her love affair with Irish revolutionary Michael Collins. Theirs is a tragic story as Collins was executed before they could get married, but it just goes to show how influential this town has been in Irish history. And of course, Deirdre couldn't let mom go without one more costume change. Okay. Okay. Ah, crap. Battery's dying. Okay, so today we went to the Knights and Conquest uh, Museum here in, um, what's the name of the town? It starts with a G. Oh gosh, it starts with a G. But it, but it's a really great spot. Definitely try to check it out. I'll try to link or write things down somewhere. Um, Mom, what did you think of everything? I really enjoyed it. It, yeah. was, it was fun. Did you enjoy putting on the costumes I and did. all of that? I did. I really yeah. did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so there was a school group coming through when we were leaving. And it was a... Um, it was... Uh, a group of a group of kids and one of the kids was actually the uh, the niece of the guy we're staying with so that's really cool <laughs> uh, it's a very small town thing and but they, they they pulled it off really well all things considered like it's a nice little museum it's definitely a small off the beaten track kind of thing but it was a nice museum so yeah come check it out okay so we gotta get going and my camera's gonna die so who knows what the quality of the videos are gonna be from this point onward because I don't because I don't have a charger <laughs> Bye. my camera died immediately after that clip I forgot to bring an adapter for my charger rookie move I know <laughs> so the next few days get pretty messy filming wise we headed back towards Arva and the cottage making a few stops along the way the weather was rough as soon as we left Granard, bouncing between torrential rain and nearly clear blue skies. 
We went to another one of Michael's recommendations, Loch Lieben, and tried to make the most of the 30 minute break in the rain. We explored this absolutely adorable and absolutely creepy park next to the lake that was full of ceramic figurines. My favorite part had to be this fairy village and the teddy bear picnic. Mom's had to be the full rainbow that came into view right before the rain started again. Back at the cottage, we FaceTimed my grandmother and aunt, only to be joined by the man of the house himself, Michael. <laughs> he performed a poem for us and, as always, left us in stitches. <laughs> they flash upon the inward eye, which is the bliss of solitude. And then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. <laughs> Very oh. good. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> After a long, long day, we relaxed in front of the fire with a new show, in our cheesy matching pajamas, of course. You can't do a mother-daughter trip without matching pajamas. I slept so well that night, sad to be leaving the cottage the next day, but excited for our next adventure.